Right, so let's talk metaverse. We see the term popping up more and more, but it's still a bit abstract. What to do with it and how will the metaverse change the way we live our lives right now? So to dive into this metaverse and also why it needs more humanity, uh, I'm proudly to announce our second keynote speaker of the day. She's co-founder and CMO, Chief Metaverse Officer at Startup Straight Fire, and her name is Bei Wang. Give her an applause, please. Good morning, everyone. I'm very uh, excited to be here. Um, I also want to address that um, as a alpha student or liberal arts student, I would never imagine that one day I'm fully indulged in the magical tech world and also I'm so honored to be here on the podium of uh, talking as uh, uh, yeah for the tech hero a female tech hero so um, I really enjoyed uh, the talk about the magic world of tech and I think this uh, presentation or this uh, talk is goes perfectly along the line with it because um, I don't know if any of you uh, are familiar with the word metaverse. Please raise your hands. I see yeah, a lot of people. And anyone think that you already work in the metaverse? Very good. Uh, anyone played game or playing game? Are you a gamer? I see a lot. Anyone use uh, TikTok? Well, I think it's uh, the reason why I'm saying this is because uh, you will see in a moment. And again, uh, metaverse is a very, very hype word. It's, it's, uh, it's such a hype, you see it everywhere, but I have to say it's very early. And a lot of media say last year, it's the first year, but um, so this year is the second year. Um, my talk is uh, with the title, Why We Should Put More Humanity in the Metaverse. I'm not going to answer that question because I think it's a question that we should all answer together. And let's answer together in the end and maybe not today, uh, but in the, in the coming time and just like towards the future. First, I would like to also introduce a little bit about myself. So again, as I said, I, I think uh, even still today, I would never imagine I'm considered as one of the professionals working in the tech world uh, because I have a completely uh, art and communication and I would say liberal art background. Um, I always like to introduce myself as a cultural broker. So what is a cultural broker? Cultural broker is a specialist play the role as a uh, intermediary or mediator um, for uh, people from different culture or maybe among different cultures with the goal of reducing conflicts and generating um, changes. So the, the, this name actually kind of like summarized what I did in the past because I'm Chinese origin, but I always work uh, in Europe and then I, my, my work is always related to Asia. So it's like really cross-cultural work. Um, I'm currently also an educator so I'm part-time uh, innovator, or you can call it like entrepreneur, but part-time educator. I think that gives a very good combination because as entrepreneur, you're always optimistic. And as uh, educator, you're always idealistic. So when you combine the optimism and idealism, you are always very happy. So I think being a happy person, and, and enjoy your work. I think that is something that I, we all try to pursue, like uh, this, this like mood balance. But of course, sometimes uh, it's not really, really um, ideal to have this type of, because it's almost a kind of like a childism in, the, uh, in this type of mentality. Um, so um, yeah, I, I also call myself a Web3 entrepreneur, and what is Web3? It's another word that is very hype now, but it's still like there's a lot of uh, exploration. I do want to make a remark here because metaverse is a word that is being, I personally think is overly used. So today I'm going to also talk uh, with some different information, but then it's purely for the references. 
because um, yesterday I just read something from the founder of uh, Ethereum, and he uh, tweet on the Twitter and saying that he feels like metaverse is there's no kind of like coherent definition about it, which is also true, because we are in an age with a lot of lot of like uh, tech narratives. So um, here it's very interesting to kind of uh, really maybe put a little bit more like the uh, liberal art or humanistic uh, thinking that, okay, we need to be aware of different narrative. Um, and then again, me being uh, between the culture, so uh, I'm, uh, my background is also in the media. Uh, as a journalist, uh, I, in the past, so I like to ask a lot of questions. And I think even though I don't work, I didn't work in the, in the tech field professionally, but I've been interviewing a lot of tech companies. So I think keep asking questions that somehow kind of like made me also a perfect student uh, in, by doing things uh, in, in different industry. Um, and then I have a very interesting uh, 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 and another story to tell because uh, Straight Fire, my current company, uh, I'm the co-founder, but before that, uh, I'm a serial entrepreneur. So uh, before that, I run a digital uh, consulting uh, company. So uh, through that company, uh, I help Western uh, companies entering Chinese market um, through digital e-commerce, digital communication, digital marketing. And um, as you can see on the photo, uh, I've, I feel very interesting in, in such a world because uh, in 2016, I took the Abi Am Amaro digital team to China. Uh, we organized an event about blockchain. So again, with that event, I think, okay, I have to start learn about blockchain, which is a very tech word for me. But I, again, I think that I, I really see maybe from my very alpha uh, perspective that I kind of like see more like the application of technology. Um, and then um, in 2018, or 2019, I took a group of tech uh, and professional uh, so on the photo, I'm the only woman. Uh, I took a group of young tech entrepreneurs. They are all Dutch young men and uh, very passionate. Uh, they they uh, they have their startup either in like a fintech or maybe in uh, in in like app development. So I took them on a digital learning trip to China. So we visited a lot of uh, AI company and VR and AR, and we visited Tencent. We visited. Uh, uh, a, a lot of uh, a, a interesting like tech company. Um, so it was really funny because they even considered me as their school teacher. I was like, I can't imagine that because I'm, uh, I'm not from really your professional field. But they said, yeah, you are able to really bridge the different worlds. And, and by, so now I can realize like cultural broker, not just a mean culture from different geographic culture, but also subcultural or maybe different, uh, maybe, maybe uh, uh, art or maybe a tech field. So different, uh, that kind of uh, a cultural uh, perspective. And then um, very recently, uh, I co-founded Straight Fire in, together with two other uh, guys uh, in 2020. So we kind of started to explore it, but at the same time, I also created a minor program called Digital China. So by creating that minor program, I think I'm truly combined different uh, fundamental subjects together. So within that uh, minor program, there are four courses. One is fully about marketing, about uh, communication, but the other is called New Silicon Valley, which is very tech uh, a course. Uh, through that course, I, I co-developed uh, with some other um, and professionals. So the course is about uh, a lot of like new technology developments from China. Um, and yeah, I'm now um, exploring the new tech uh, or digital frontier because I tend to use digital frontier is because I think here is the field that we really combine different uh, elements together. So. Um, here comes the metaverse. Um, again, um, I just I made that remark, metaverse is such a hyped word, 
and um, we should be really careful not to be dragged into the mainstream media. I'm very vocal about it because I used to work as a journalist. So mainstream media is tend to kind of use branded content to kind of uh, dominate a certain narrative. I would highly suggest everyone uh, doing your own research. But uh, to start, really, I think in this uh, at this stage, I really would like to um, explain uh, metaverse with a very like pure technical explanation because I think that that is less driven by emotion. Maybe that's a good thing. So uh, we all know that it's, it's a word actually come from a science fiction uh, novel. So science fiction novel, uh, I think, as we said, sometimes imagination really creates the future vision. And then what makes it even more interesting is that maybe what uh, lead to us, uh, what the technology development lead to us is based on our human, uh, human uh, longings. So um, in the uh, science fiction, it's often um, explained the metaverse as a single, universal, immersive virtual world that is uh, facilitated by the use of VR and AR headsets. I think here are the keywords is VR, AR. And of course, um, because we see, based on those keywords, a lot of companies, that's why I ask if anyone of you are working in this already, if you are working in a VR or AR company, I think, yeah, uh, it's very clear that you work in the metaverse sector already. Um, but also, uh, for a lot of like tech, uh, techno tech, tech, uh, technological perspective, um, I really like this definition of uh, a network of 3D virtual worlds focused on social connection. I think this is a very short uh, sentence, but it combines a few words really, really crucial. One is 3D, which gives us the uh, experience like, okay, when it's 3D, it looks more vivid. So we all know like uh, from 2D to 3D. So when it's 3D that you feel like, okay, it's immersive, right? And then social connection, that is very important. What is social connection? We are humans, human are social animals. So it's all about human activities in it. Um, the photo I purposely chosen is very representative. One is uh, a, a typical, if you search metaverse and Google uh, search, you will find that kind of photo. And if you pay extra attention, you will notice that any visuals about metaverse, it has this two color combination, blue and purple. Right? Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's very predictable. But uh, this one uh, is from China, or the Chinese media. So I also like it because it has this pastel, almost like childlike, quite kind of soft color. Uh, if you really compare those colors, I mean, we all know like pictures speak thousands of words. So this certain like color difference it also gives a certain tone, okay, is it more like dystopian future or is it more kind of idealistic, fun? And so I think that kind of already shine a little bit of different direction. But in general, I think it's this quite cartoonic and animated kind of color. Well, again, no one is defining um, um, Oh, well, of course, someone is trying to define it, like Mark Zuckerberg of uh, Metaverse. But um, uh, I think um, when we really want to understand the development of the Metaverse, I, 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 I'm a storyteller. I like to tell stories as well. So I picked up a few event moments. And I think if we really pick those moments and th uh, use those uh, events as a benchmark, you will see, OK, how uh, Metaverse develops. So first is uh, in 1992. That's when the book Snow Crash is written. And the, the Metaverse, the word, come from the book Snow Crash. And there's a very interesting fun fact. The uh, writer of um, a Snow Crash, and um, he um, is currently the chief futuristic officer of uh, Magic Leap. Yeah, I think it's, it's, a, it's a human interface uh, uh, gadget company. So it's very interesting to see like a novelist or writer now involved in the, also in the technology development. So again, it really linked, okay, I imagine something and I want to make that true. Um, 
And then 2015, the reason why I put Decentraland there is if today a lot of people search metaverse, a lot of people feel like, oh, Decentraland is a perfect example. But please beware, Decentraland started to develop already in 2015. Did it call itself metaverse back then? No, but uh, it was already starting to develop. So as we can see, there's a lot of like projects or like um, activities. It's already in, um, in, in, in its uh, development a long way before uh, this word becomes a hype. Uh, and today, Decentraland is a very popular uh, virtual uh, uh, platform where people can create different experience in it. For example, I know some of my friends, they also create uh, a company, in, they, they create like Chinatown in it, and there's a Singapore company um, we collaborate with, they start to create like tour guides in the Decentraland, because they said, yeah, as in our, our real life, uh, if we go somewhere, if we go to a different country, we need like some tour guide. Either you have a book of it, Lonely Planet, or you go to the uh, a, a, a desk about asking information, or you just search beforehand. And then 2016, anyone played Pokemon Go? I see a lot of hands, I love it. I played it too. So in 2016, uh, Pokemon Go was so popular, so popular that even a lot of news like report like uh, uh, warning people to be careful because you see people in public like using their phone and then like looking for those uh, Pokemon. And um, so the, the global hype of Pokemon uh, Go actually already shined a light of how AR can create that experience because um, Actually, the company uh, behind Pokemon Go, they are already creating a park, a, like theme park, so where you can fully kind of play that uh, uh, an AR game. Um, and then 2017, uh, the Fortnite becomes really popular. Uh, my son plays it, and I know a lot of kids uh, likes it. And uh, I think um, the, the popularization of uh, Fortnite also show a certain kind of sign of how you have like experience from all part of the world uh, can uh, enjoy something together. For example, I, I see my son like uh, during the time that he uh, go to, uh, he turn on the game and waiting for the specific moment of a launch. Like he's connected to his friends, but also I also know some people that actually made some friends uh, through that game. So I think it kind of show uh, activity of uh, what's happening in the uh, metaverse and also in the future. 2018, Ready Play One. Anyone watch the film? Yes, I see a lot of hands. And that film, I think, the, that film gives so much inspiration because remember I just said about this color tone of purple and, and blue? <laughs> that film, the entire film is have that color tone. So I think it's almost like people using uh, Ready Player One as already the example of um, a metaverse. Um, I'll talk about that later. So last year, well, uh, uh, Facebook changed its name to Meta, and of course, it's a very, very commercial change because by changing that name, that he completely uh, dominated the Google search, and also uh, when you do the anal uh, analytics, and then it's kind of like a lot of, lot of people tend to kind of feel like, okay, uh, is that Metaverse? Well, no, that is not metaverse because I think metaverse is with meta and verse. So it's, you can't just linger on uh, the word meta, right? <laughs> and um, uh, I, I, uh, for this year, I purposely, uh, for me personally, and also for a lot of people in, the, uh, in, in, the, in, in our uh, field or in the space, like we like to use that term, um, Unreal Engine, uh, Unreal Engine 5 is launched. I, I don't know if, if, if you um, Google it or use it, uh, search it on YouTube. Try to look at the new uh, trailer of Unreal Engine um, because Unreal Engine is this spatial computing that they can create this virtual world so realistic that you can hardly even tell the difference. I used that visual 
at a certain master class, and I put different uh, photos from like some uh, uh, cities, like uh, uh, very uh, cosmopolitan cities in the world, like for example Shenzhen in China, and or maybe Toronto and uh, and Tokyo, and then also a city photo of Unreal Engine, and I ask a student to guess which one is real, which one is fake, and I think no, no, none of them even think that the fake city or virtual city is uh, is virtual. They think it's real. Okay, so here comes the virals. Uh, you can see like the, the the color tone I was talking about, right? So this central land has this very cartoonish and and very uh, uh, happy and and uh, bright color, while um, you can see like uh, Ready Player One, it's, it has this kind of very cyberpunk kind of look. And I think it's, it's very interesting for people to kind of uh, envision it. And there I'm thinking if we can imagine whatever, why do we have to always use that color, right? So, um, okay, here is another visual uh, to match the other evidence. So <laughs> I purposely match that is because you can see like I'm not in favor of meta. So. Uh, uh, the metaverse, uh, uh, metas, metaverse. Uh, this is this is uh, like the virtual meeting environment they create, and I I also attended some other like uh, big tech companies uh, virtual meeting environment. It's not very attractive because imagine if you go to a place, if you want to have a good experience, it's so important that you are in a very. So if I have to go to a virtual place, it has to be a place that it looks better and nicer than my real life, right? If I go to a place it's, it's uglier than my real life, then why would I want to have a meeting there? So, so uh, and then that is the, the, the really cool, uh, as, uh, the uh, Unreal Engine 5, they kind of like rebuild the um, um, film, the uh, Matrix film uh, scene. So it looks, uh, looks very realistic. However, the latest uh, Matrix film is a flop. So, um, well, um, just now we have those. Um, the reason why I selected this is because those are from a user perspective. It's in the mainstream media, so I think visual. What people like tend to uh, get interested or believe in what they see. So I think the previous like seven events, I think it, it the, the popular uh, popularization of it, it really gives people like the the curiosity or maybe even like or maybe fear or maybe uh, interests. And of course, for also a lot of people that they think, okay, that is highly lucrative. Um, what I also want to point out uh, because. Very recently, Metaverse is truly getting to the, the mainstream um, because um, the World Economic Forum started an uh, in initial called uh, uh, like exploring Metaverse. The reason why I'm mentioning this is uh, here comes a lot of, lot of attention um, because then once uh, established global organization, they started to really talk about it. We see more and more mainstream talking about it, we will see that here metaverse is, goes beyond technology, goes beyond a business. It is also getting to a, a, a phase of probably a competition, probably a, a, a conflict, but also possibly for a lot of uh, a, a consideration that we probably did, didn't uh, get aware in the beginning. For example, the ethical uh, thinkings. Because in a metaverse field, it's all about creating experience, uh, and then what kind of experience we are creating, um, what kind of incidents it might happen. Um, so, ethical discussion, and again, uh, I always tend to say that when the new technology started, we need to think already things uh, ahead. Um, during uh, some recent events, I noticed that, uh, like including today's events, we uh, tend to uh, call for like diversity inclusion, uh, maybe like uh, eco or sustainable thinking. But I think the best time for us to implement uh, those uh, those thinkings and all these, uh, for example, diversities, is to uh, implant it in the very beginning. So imagine that. Um, Metaverse just started, 
so uh, how important to already implant the diversities in it. Uh, speaking of that is because uh, that's the reason also drive me into this. I work with a lot of guys in my team. Uh, although uh, we have a lot of developers, they really focusing on the um, development, but then we also have a very strong emphasis on creating experience and telling stories. It's so important to have different perspective in the storytelling. Uh, I always say to them, women, uh, we have a different way of solving problem. So maybe if you want to solve this problem in this way, maybe we can solve it in other way. So I think strategically is also very important. Um, another very important thing, as you can already hear from, from my talk, that I'm very vocal about uh, open metaverse, um, because we see now some existing big tech, they tend to kind of uh, build a a platform uh, or build the or develop the metaverse based on their existing um, a, a network. Um, so you can also see a lot of entrepreneurs or companies from all over the world. Uh, here I included, like, uh, like for example, Animoca brands that's from Asia, and um, uh, your open metaverse is a, it's a Dutch uh, company, so it's also our partner. Uh, they have, they even name that. I love it. Um, for us, uh, as Straight Fire, we put Metaverse in our uh, North Star. So we just put it there. We said, okay, we, are, we don't claim ourselves as a Metaverse company, uh, but we tend to kind of uh, develop our thinking or at least our vision of Metaverse. Um, and then, um, again, uh, getting a little bit me uh, more on the practical side, what we are talking about metaverse. I think this is a, one of my favorite uh, a, a diagram um, to show like what are different layers or what are different. Here, I think it even indicates different sectors, different industries involved in the metaverse. I think uh, many of you, uh, if you already work in 5G or 6G, and now you will know you are already in part of the metaverse uh, uh, company because that's for the infrastructure layer. And then, of course, the human interface, like all these uh, mobile um, uh, appliance and uh, smart headsets, uh, decentralization, spatial computing, like Unreal Engine, Unity, those type of company that they create a super realistic and all like um, uh, uh, these for, for, for designers. Uh, create an economy, discovery and experience. I think it, the, the, the uh, big, the, the outer circle you go, you will see a different like knowledge and different thinkings, different skills are needed. So I would rather call this is a area that is many many different um, skill sets and knowledge nodes are combined. Um, currently, the metaverse market, um, I really like this one as well because it's not necessarily new companies joining, but old existing company already join it. So that's why we consider the metaverse is a much bigger concept, not like Facebook is metaverse, no, or not like uh, Roblox is metaverse, no. So um, there's a lot of players, uh, a lot of new players enter. Uh, I think it's very, very interesting to see that uh, if we consider, okay, are we really adding like uh, humanities already in it? I would say it is already in it. Um, Last, I see a lot of young face here um, because, um, again, get back to my own role. I think uh, maybe I will still be the cultural broker in the metaverse. Um, and you can see uh, the jobs and, and the works is redefined. Uh, some, I, I talked to one of our uh, a blockchain developer. He is a typical engineer, but he is now creating generative art and then mint them into NFT, and then he wants to sell it because he said, yeah, this is the moment for me to really like uh, be the creative I want. Um, I also work with a mathematician, and he is uh, also creating art based on mathematics. I think for, for if we look at it in, from this perspective, it is the perfect moments that when different elements, they all answer. And then again, yeah, um, why should we bring humanity in the metaverse? 
and I think the answer is there already. Um, if some food for thoughts, um, I, we think that metaverse will be a symbiotic oasis of technology and humanity. Uh, and metaverse will be a way to blend physical and digital worlds. And then, of course, my favorite quote from Leonardo da Vinci. Um, I would like to end my talk uh, with uh, a video because um, uh, Straight Fire, uh, the company we, uh, I co-founded, we uh, are a Web3 startup. So um, what do we do? Well, we focus on uh, NFT, but that's another discussion we can have uh, in, a, in a separate session. Um, what we develop is we are trying to uh, bridge Web2 and Web3, uh, and we are also trying to um, uh, really encourage the creator economy. So we developed this app that on one side you can connect it to your um, uh, NFT and the other side you can share it and create the stories and then uh, share it on your social. Basically, we create a 3D stage in the app. Um, some people said, yeah, you guys are actually creating metaverse. We said, well, maybe our 3D stage is part of metaverse. So I would like to say it. Thanks a lot for sharing your insights on the metaverse. Of course, you're active with your company in the metaverse, but how is it like for you personally? Are you using a lot of apps and tools? Yeah. Are you a gamer? Yes, I am. Yes, yes. you are. Yeah, I always feel like I, I'm ahead of my time uh, because I'm already in my uh, mid-40s, but um, I'm always uh, very into game. And, uh, but I, I also teach like creator economy at school because I, I sometimes analyze to the students like if we look at how game changed, like 20 years ago, if you're a gamer, people think you look like a hacker, <laughs> like uh, in some hoodies and like uh, completely like antisocial. But nowadays, I think everyone can be a gamer um, because uh, I think we, we learn from playing games. And uh, um, so, yeah, for sure. And uh, I'm also... Uh, I'm very into science fiction stories, and uh, my dream when I was very little, young, I, I wanted to be, be a detective. So, and I think all the things I do now, it kind of like a dream come true. <laughs> and, and last week you were in Amsterdam, yes. also at the European Tech Conference. Yes. You are now in Eindhoven. Yes. We are very uh, hardware focused. Yes. Eh? We develop small devices, sensors, complex machines eh? yeah. like ASML. How can we link to the metaverse well, uh, a little bit more here in, in the, this in the, in the one of the slides already, uh, because uh, infrastructure, uh, infrastructure, human interface, those two layers is already covered. But I know also uh, we, um, we also see nowadays, um, we always address that technology is for the human good, right? Technology is meant to make our life uh, easier or better. And so I think um, if we talk about like the foundational uh, layer, I think um, it's, there. It's, it's here already. But I think it's very important also to kind of look more and more on the human interface uh, part and also application. Because I also feel like uh, the technology nowadays, uh, they make it so accessible. F so it's not necessarily like high tech 
changed the world. I also sometimes think low tech changed the world as well. And that's something that I would really, maybe as a side note, that the humanity, adding more humanity into a technology. Because sometimes I feel like if we look at um, the tech world and, and uh, maybe consumer world, in the end, it's all about mass adaption, right? Uh, what is mass adaption? I think it's, we, we need to have people use it. If you create something that is very exclusive for a small group of people, then I think that is not what we want to do with our technology. Technology is to make everyone on Earth live better. Yeah, thank you, uh, Bay. Are there questions from the audience before we go to the break? Yeah. So, well, uh, I, I actually did not realize what the experience was like with the many, you know, the worst uh, players on the team. I never realized I'm already part of that. Yes. <laughs> Very good point, because uh, I think, um, actually, um, I also work as, uh, I'm a mother too, I, I have two kids, and I also work as a teacher with young students. And I think what the kids are doing now, we should really see them as the in inspiration, because they are digital natives. They grow up living there, and then instead of we prevent them, of course, uh, I try to limit my son's uh, 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 screen time, but uh, instead of like completely li like limit them from there, I think learn from them because they grow up already in this world and then when they grow older, and I think a lot of people also ask about like what might be the future job, what might be the future, well, because they, they I, I think a lot of us, um, we do what we do uh, based on what we experienced when we were young. And I think for them, it's the same thing. So I would suggest that try to understand them. You don't have to uh, really jump into, like, do the dance together. But I think maybe that's why I said the metaverse now become mainstream, um, why different players want to research, like, ethical sides of it. Uh, for example, you have like a Roblox, they create all these virtual experience, but what kind of content we deliver? So we need to think about ethical, but also legal or moral uh, thinking. So um, I would say for our own kids, um, we uh, learn together with them. Uh, and then, yeah, I think if, you, if your kids is still too young and if you want to control some screen time, it's still fair to do. Um, but I think it's very important that we also try to learn from their perspective and see what the future might be, because what we build now, it's for them. And I think they are going to take it over and create more opportunity for them. Okay, yeah. thank you. A big applause. <laughs> 